everything and nothing. A narrator is made, a poet is born. My best friend lives down my street and there's definitely something you need to understand about her before I go any further. She's a love, she really is, and she definitely has a quirk. Dottie writes poems, verses, rhymes, and she writes them on the spot. Full improvisation mode, poems to order. If she was less of a human, I'm sure she'd turn this quirk into a party piece, but she keeps it pretty quiet. In fact, she seems a little ashamed of her obsession and need to create pictures with words. It's only dead fish that go with the flow, she'd say. Look at life with your wide-angle brain lens, was another one of hers. Make your life a rhyme, was her version of making every second count. I've been Dottie's neighbour and friend for 20 years, and as time went on, I looked up to her more and more. I even tried to emulate her, but sadly, I was useless. You'll never get better if you don't practice, Audrey, Dottie advised. I have made up poems every day since I was three, and it means I can now write a poem about anything. There was no arrogance and I needed no proof, but I asked for it anyway. Do a poem about a coracle, Dottie. She thought for a few moments, scribbled down some notes on an A4 pad, and then in less than 30 seconds she read, I travelled to sea in a coracle. I did the points not quite rhetorical. The truth of it's clear and canonical, and I'll tell you the tale quite polemical. I nodded. Interesting. I like all the big words that run together and sound similar, but the whole thing makes no sense. Yes, it does, Dottie said. Anyway, what do you expect? I'm not a miracle worker. I can't write an intellectual essay that's also a poem in 30 seconds. I can do something more serious if you like. Within 10 seconds, she read, jaundiced, jaded, mean, dejected. Life expects the unexpected. Be undaunted. Keep it strong. This planet's home's where you belong. I nodded. Bet you can't write about a zoo. Dottie's latest zoo poem took just over a minute to construct. The panda twirls its bamboo cane, its white coat marred by dried on mud, then raises food to mouth to crunch the crispy stem and tender bud. I stare into its cold black eyes. I reach my hand out in surprise. The panda yawns and rolls around, then falls from tree with massive thud. This zoo's the very model of a place for creatures to explore. Their tank of sharks is fuller now than I've ever seen before. The ocelot's hilarious, the chimpanzee's gregarious, the camel's stamping noisily, like preparing for a war. Your poems are getting worse, I said. Apart from hilarious and gregarious, that bit was good. Well, what do you expect? Uh, sense? Rhythm? Fun? Serious? Long? Concise? Fantasy? Rhyming? Not rhyming? You know. Everything and nothing. A miracle, in other words, Dottie said. Yeah, a miracle. And talking of miracles, I actually wrote something. I think it's the start of a poem. I did it last night. Wow, said Dottie. But her voice reflected her knowledge of my previous writing history. Undaunted, I cleared my throat and began to read. Christine is a guinea pig who loves to eat and drink. She weeks and cries and runs about and waits for cabbage and carrots at the fridge. Ah, oh, that started well, Dottie said kindly. But your second line's all over the place. Like the guinea pig running about, I said, bursting into giggles at my own ineptitude. Dottie joined me in the giggles. I love how hard you try, Audrey, she said, wiping the tears from her right cheek. You're utterly hilarious. The lovely Dottie died one week after I read her the guinea pig effort. It was sudden, but was as a result of a long-standing heart condition. Her funeral basically became a poetry festival and celebration. She even made the national news. Lancashire poet dies in hospital following heart attack was the headline. And I took it as a major insult to Dottie that the journalist covering her death couldn't even be bothered to create a clever headline in tribute to her. I was fuming about this and had laid the offending newspaper on my coffee table till I decided what to do about it. I made a mug of coffee and rested it on the paper disdainfully when the doorbell sounded. At the door was a young woman I recognised from Dottie's house and funeral, her daughter Amy. Hi Audrey, I have something for you, Amy said. I found it with my mum's will. Intrigued, I invited Amy in and we settled on my sofa. 
I stared down at the chunky envelope. It was labelled with a few words in dotish writing. To my best friend and neighbour, Audrey Lott. I thought you might appreciate. Love you. Kiss. I opened the envelope and inside was a chunky notebook I'd never seen before. Flicking through it, I realised with tears in my eyes that Dottie had remembered all my poetry efforts and had completed my ideas. The final entry was Christine is a guinea pig. Christine's my patchwork guinea pig who loves her peas and beans, raw cabbages, bananas and near every type of greens. She skulks in wait beside the fridge, then weeks impatiently. Get apple and some raspberries now. I'll eat them on your knee. I knew that I'd missed Dotty even more than I missed the weaky pig, Miss Chrissy. Sighing, I replaced the notebook in the envelope and saw Amy out, then finally opened the book Dotty had bought me at least ten years earlier. How to write poetry. I removed the bookmark from page four and continued my reading. <laughs>